Hi. In this video, I'm going to present an introduction to my YouTube Spintronics course. From this video, you are going to see an overview of the field of Spintronics, and you're going to learn how one can manipulate the spin angular momentum of the electron and use it to realize alternative microelectronic devices. You are also going to learn some fundamentals about magnetostatics that will serve as a foundation to the forthcoming classes. My name is Aurélien Manchon. I'm an associate professor at CAOS, where I conduct research in modern magnetism and spin electronics. This course is designed for graduate students, researchers, and anyone interested in learning the fundamentals of spin electronics. If you want to benefit from this class, you should have some basic knowledge in electromagnetism, quantum mechanics, and solid state physics. This course is organized around four themes. In the first series of lectures, we will address fundamental of magnetism. In the second series of lectures, we will talk about macromagnetism, magnetic textures, and magnetization dynamics. In the third series of lectures, we will talk about spin transport and its applications. In addition, I have prepared specific lectures on contemporary topics of current interest, such as spin arbitronics, anti-ferromagnetic spintronics, spin calorectronics, and so on. To learn more about the entire spintronics course, please visit my YouTube channel. In the description of this course, there is a link to our website. On the website, you can learn more about our research. You're going to find a complete list of the courses, as well as a PDF file of the script of every single lecture. Finally, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section down there. Um, and don't forget to subscribe. So if you're ready, let's start. To start this introduction, let us take a high-level perspective in the field of spintronics. Now let us ask ourselves this first question. What is the spin? Well, the spin angular momentum is a fundamental quantum mechanical property intrinsic to every elementary particle, composite particles, and quasi-particles. It quantifies the degree of intrinsic rotation and is expressed in terms of the reduced Planck constant, h-bar. For instance, fermions, such as electrons and protons, possess a quantized spin angular momentum that is half of an h-bar. On the other hand, bosons, such as photons, magnons, phonons, possess a quantized angular momentum that is simply an integer times h-bar. Well, in this course, we'll be mostly interested in the spin of the electron. Well, in this case, the spin of the electron is h-bar over 2. If you project the spin angular momentum on a quantization axis, you're going to have basically two kinds of projections, plus h-bar over 2 and minus h-bar over 2. Classically, you can picture the spin angular momentum as an intrinsic rotation degree of freedom. It is not completely true because the electron is a point particle. In addition, remember that the electron is a quantum mechanical particle. So generally speaking, the electron spin is a superposition of plus h-bar and minus h-bar. Now, things are becoming interesting. The electron has a spin, but it also has a charge. A spinning charge creates a magnetic moment. So the electron carries a magnetic moment mu that is directly proportional to its spin angular momentum s following this formula. Here, mu is the magnetic moment expressed in electron volt per tesla. g is a unitless constant just called the g factor. Mu b is a ball magnetron in electron volt per tesla. And s is the spin expressed in unit of h-bar. Now that we know what an electron spin is, the next question is, how can we use it in real technological applications? I'm going to tell you about 
two success stories. The first success story concerns the magnetoresistive reed heads of magnetic hard drive, a technology that is based on the discovery of the giant magnetoresistance by Peter Grunberg and Albert Fert in 1988. For this discovery, Fert and Grunberg received the 2007 Physics Nobel Prize. To understand giant magnetoresistance, let us consider a device composed of two ferromagnets separated by a spacer. This device is called a spin valve. The magnetization of the two ferromagnets can be set either parallel or anti-parallel to each other. Consider the first situation when the magnetizations are parallel. In this case, when electrons are injected through the device, their spin progressively aligns along the magnetization of the first ferromagnetic layer and the electrons simply flow through the second ferromagnetic layer without much scattering. The overall resistance of the device is low. Now, if I switch the magnetization of the second layer down, the two magnetizations are anti-parallel to each other. Again, the injected electrons become spin polarized by the first layer but have a hard time to penetrate the second layer and experience substantial scattering. The overall resistance of the device is high. The difference of resistance between parallel and anti-parallel configurations is called the giant magnetoresistance. This phenomenon will be further discussed in this course. This physical mechanism has been used to sense the magnetic states of magnetic hard drives, and this led to a massive improvement of the storage capacity. To get an idea of the impact of magnetoresistive sensors on the recording technology, have a look at this graph. It represents the qualitative evolution of the aerial density of information stored on a magnetic recording device over the past 60 years. Between the late 50s and the beginning of the 90s, the technology was based on thin films, while the magnetic reed heads were mainly based on inductive detection. This technology was able to sustain a growth rate of about 25% over 30 years. In the 90s, the implementation of magnetoresistive heads using an isotropic and giant magnetoresistance resulted in a very large enhancement of the growth rate up to 60% per year, enabling the achievement of storage densities up to a few terabytes per inch square. In the past decade though, experts have noticed a slowdown of the data storage capacity growth, indicating that the traditional magnetic recording method is now reaching its limits. Alternative technologies are being considered, such as heat-assisted magnetic recording, also called HAMMER. The second success story I want to talk about concerns magnetic random access memory. This kind of device is based on the discovery of the spin transfer torque mechanism by Luc Berger and John Sonzuski in 1996. For this discovery, the two researchers received the Buckley Prize from the American Physical Society in 2013. Let us come back to our spin valve device, and for the sake of the demonstration, we consider the anti-parallel configuration. As I mentioned previously, in this configuration, the electrons that are spin polarized by the first layer are strongly scattered by the second layer. Now, if one injects a very large current through the device, it is possible to reverse the magnetization of the second layer and obtain a parallel magnetic configuration. The underlying physics involves the transfer of angular momentum between the incoming spins and the magnetization, and will be discussed later in greater details. What is important at this stage is that now I have a mechanism by which I can control the magnetic state of my layer just by sending a current through it. This led to the development 
of magnetic random access memories. In this device, the information is stored in the free layer. A parallel configuration between the reference layer and the free layer stands for a bit value of 0, while an anti-parallel configuration stands for a bit value of 1. And I can control these configurations just by sending a current through the device. The important property of this device is that it is non-volatile. So in other words, I do not need to bring energy to maintain the information. It cannot, it cannot be erased unless I apply a big current through the system or I hit the system. This technology is currently being pursued by semiconductor giants like IBM, Intel, Samsung, TSMC, and so on. So let us recap. The spin angular momentum is a quantum mechanical property that quantifies the intrinsic rotation degree of freedom. It can be used to make devices for data storage and memory applications. So the next question is, where is Spintronics research going? Well, the research is actually blossoming along many exciting directions. For instance, an important research direction which my group is working on concerns the exploitation of spin-orbit coupling, the connection between the spin and the orbital degrees of freedom. This field, called spin orbitronics, covers fascinating topics such as spin hull effect, magnetic skirmions, and spin orbit torques. Another promising direction that we are also addressing concerns anti ferromagnets and other complex magnetic materials. Up till recently, most spintronics devices, like the spin valve I was mentioning before, have been involving ferromagnets. It is actually possible to replace these ferromagnets by much more intriguing magnetic materials, such as antiferromagnets. These antiferromagnets display fascinating properties, and in particular, they show no overall magnetic stray field and they display terahertz excitations. Topological materials, such as topological insulators, whale or Dirac semi-metals, are also attracting a massive amount of attention. These materials possess a non-trivial ground state and strong spin momentum locking, resulting in mind-blowing phenomena like quantum spin hall effect or Carrel anomaly. Superconductors, which conduct electric currents without dissipation at low temperature, also hold thrilling promises, as very large spin currents can be generated using these systems. As a matter of fact, it has been shown that spin currents carried by superconducting quasiparticles can display extremely long spin relaxation time. Why superconducting spin currents occur at low temperature, at the other end of the thermometer, another research direction called spin calorectronics consists in manipulating spin currents using heat and temperature gradients. Intriguing effects such as spin Zebec, spin Nurst, or spin Peltier effects have been demonstrated experimentally and can be used to convert spin signal into heat and vice versa. On a much shorter time scale, a very promising direction concerns what is called femtomagnetism. Ultra short pulses of light can trigger quite complex spin and charge dynamics resulting in the excitation of terahertz spin current and ultra-fast magnetization reversal. Finally, I would like to mention the exploitation of spin waves in insulators that paves the way toward chargeless magnetic devices only based on magnons. Such magnons, which are magnetic excitations, can be induced either by gigahertz exciting fields or temperature gradients and carry spin information over long distances, allowing for the design of low-power logic gates. The development of Spintronics research has been made possible by recent breakthrough in nanofabrication, in particular thin film technology and electron beam lithography. In addition, it's also benefited massively from the continuous discovery of new materials like dilute magnetic semiconductors, organic materials, oxides, topological materials, 
two-dimensional materials, and so on. And finally, it also substantially profited from bridging with neighboring fields, like radio frequency techniques, pump probe experiments using ultrafast lasers, and terahertz technology.